days after the devastating Challenger disaster in 1986, U.S. President Ronald Reagan shocked the country in his State of the Union address by announcing plans to build a single-stage-to-orbit aircraft, an elusive concept that had been revisited several times as far back as the 1950s. Along with a baseline design initially developed by millionaire Tony DuPont, engineers from five government agencies joined forces to dust off this holy grail of aerospace engineering. The air-breathing aircraft would take off horizontally from a runway, fly into orbit, deposit its payload, and return safely while landing on a runway. The National Aerospace Plane Project would become NASA's own Orient Express, and was regarded as a revolutionary turning point beyond anything the United States or Russia had ever achieved before. The Orient Express Since the space shuttle's first flight in April of 1981, the Reagan administration realized it would need to replace part of its fleet by the early 21st century. Building a new space vehicle from scratch usually took more than a decade. Hence, the administration pursued several options to replace the shuttle, one of which was a Single Stage to Orbit Vehicle, or SSTO. A single stage orbiter reaches orbit by departing from Earth with only propellants and fluids without the need to expand tanks or engines. The SSTO concept had been widely discussed since the early 1950s. The idea of accessing space with a fully reusable vehicle promised massive economic benefits. Despite the undeniable allure and promising revenues, building a reusable vehicle in the 20th century required enormous leaps in propulsion, materials, and design techniques. On February 4th, 1986, just days after the devastating Challenger disaster, President Ronald Reagan rose before Congress to deliver his State of the Union address and stunned the country by revisiting the SSTO idea. Quote, We're going forward with our shuttle flights. We're going forward to build our space station. And we are going forward with research on a new Orient Express that could, by the end of the next decade, take off from Dulles Airport, accelerate up to 25 times the speed of sound, attaining low Earth orbit, or flying to Tokyo within two hours. Copper Canyon The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, was established under President Dwight D. Eisenhower's administration after the launch of the Soviet Sputnik satellite in 1957. Its aim was to promote scientific and technological research, and it was heavily involved in the early stages of the space race. By the 1980s, DARPA director Robert Cooper was still interested in aerospace projects and met with Tony DuPont, heir to the DuPont fortune. Since his involvement in the development of the hypersonic research engine, DuPont had continued solo research on advanced propulsion systems and believed he had found a way through many of the problems that had previously prevented SSTO progress. Cooper and DuPont joined forces with leading DARPA aerodynamicist Robert Williams to officially begin researching the feasibility of a functioning SSTO vehicle with a unique cycle propulsion system employing scramjets, engines in which combustion takes place in supersonic airflow. By 1984, these first steps showed great promise. The investigation evolved into a highly classified project called Copper Canyon, which would attempt to support the needs of the Star Wars project and Reagan's announcement of the Orient Express. The project's key goals were to provide a fully functioning single stage to orbit vehicle capable of taking off and landing on a standard runway, reaching orbit, and delivering or retrieving payloads whenever it was necessary. In order to achieve these objectives, scientists would need to resolve the combined cycle propulsion system and find a way to cope with the extreme aerodynamic heating generated by supersonic speeds of up to Mach 25. DuPont proposed employing the hydrogen fuel used to power the scramjets. By pouring the fuel through the structure of the vehicle, most of the heat could be removed from the surface. Further advances in heat-resistant materials and computational fluid dynamics would allow the creation of a robust but light enough SSTO vehicle that could endure extreme velocities, return intact, and be ready to fly again with minimal post-flight repairs and maintenance. Initial estimates by Tony DuPont using the space design were a functioning 50,000-pound vehicle prototype within five years for $5 billion. Project Copper Canyon represented phase one of the program. The next phase was to invite aircraft manufacturers to hear their recommendations on how to develop the critical technologies needed to make the vehicle a reality. The project then shed its classified status, taking on a new identity and going public. The result was the National Aerospace Plane Program, or NASP. 
which was funded by NASA, the Department of Defense, DARPA, the U.S. Air Force, the Star Wars program, and the U.S. Navy. Planning ahead. The remaining two phases of the NASA project would lead to a fully operational SSTO flight test aircraft named X-30. Phase 2 was envisioned to last until the early 1990s. Contractors would be hired to build the prototype and demonstrate the project's feasibility, while previously researched information, materials, structures, and manufacturing processes would be verified. When finished, decisions would be made on the final airframe and contracts. Phase 3 involved the design and construction of the actual X-30 vehicle and would start in the mid-1990s. When the X-30 program went public following Reagan's announcement, NASA got involved in the project. Their scientists provided significant expertise in critical areas, such as advanced air-breathing propulsion, sophisticated materials, computational fluid dynamics, and actively cooled structures. Before Copper Canyon's inception, it was widely believed that scramjets alone could not power an aircraft beyond Mach 9. The NASP concept consisted of circulating and heating hydrogen slush fuel through the surface of the X-30 prior to fuel injection. Hence, the energy generated by atmospheric drag would be added to the thrust of the scramjets. Scientists hoped this technique would allow NASP to reach a top orbital speed of Mach 25 without requiring heavy supplementary rocket engines. DuPont's initial idea and timescales had now been reconsidered, with heavier vehicle and flight tests to begin until the late 1990s. A competition. In April of 1986, the NASP project awarded McDonnell Douglas, General Dynamics, Boeing, Lockheed, and Rockwell International $35 million contracts to develop technology for a hypersonic air-breathing single-stage-to-orbit airframe. Rocketdyne and Pratt & Whitney were each awarded $175 million to develop the engines and propulsion system. The plan was for two companies to be eliminated by the following year, and by the end of 1989, final contracts would be awarded to build the flight demonstrator vehicle. In 1987, the initial airframe designs were reviewed, and all models exceeded DuPont's original estimate of 50,000 pounds by three times. Both Boeing and Lockheed were eliminated due to providing the heaviest designs. By 1990, all the remaining companies joined forces under the direction of Rockwell International to develop the SSTO vehicle and deal with the technical and budgetary obstacles that came along. A wide variety of airframe configurations were examined to ascertain their relative strengths and weaknesses. It quickly became apparent that DuPont's original baseline design had been too optimistic concerning several key areas. His X-30 initial plan did not even include landing gear, an orbital maneuvering system, or fuel reserves. In addition, the airframe's increased weight growth meant the propulsion system would produce less thrust than initially expected, and some potential missions like high inclination and polar orbits became impossible to achieve. As the X-30's development continued, the design slowly transformed from the sleek, lightweight, and futuristic-looking delta-winged model proposed by Tony Dupont into a bulky, rectangular, cross-section, blended lifting body. Fall from Grace The goal of reaching Mach 25 speeds eventually became unattainable. The active thermal management system limited the top speed to only Mach 17, and rocket engines would still be needed to take the X-30 into orbit. Meanwhile, the original budget had tripled to $10 billion, and completing Phase 3 would have added an additional seven. It was now also projected that the X-30's maiden flight would not happen until at least 2001. When President George H.W. Bush took office in 1989, the political landscape had changed immensely. The Soviet Union was beginning to lose its grip and collapsed a few years later. And with the Cold War over after 45 years, the need for the Star Wars initiative subsided. The National Aerospace Plane Project was not a priority anymore, and it was cancelled in 1995. An estimated five and a half billion dollars had already been spent. There is speculation up to this day that the NASP and Reagan Strategic Defense Initiative program might have been a deceitful maneuver to force Russia into rushed development of costly equivalent projects. Some even theorize that the Star Wars program was a cover for other highly classified Cold War projects. The likelihood of a fully functioning single space-to-orbit vehicle 
capable of military and commercial flights is still decades away from fruition. Reagan's Orient Express will have to wait until it is revived again, just like it continually has been for the last 70 years.